Hey guys, today we are going to talk about pretty much a hodgepodge of nine cards. This comes from pretty much every set and they have been spiking for different reasons. So Food Chain was a very good card. It has an infinite combo in both EDH and Legacy. It is very expensive as a foil. Now the foils of McKay Mask are just in general expensive. It wasn't always the case. It used to be 7th edition was the only foils that were really outrageously expensive in terms of 20 or 50 multipliers on the card. But the Mercadian Mask has a similar multiplier now. And what does that mean? That means Apocalypse, that means Invasion, it means a lot of other cards during the same period of time in foil could experience a huge tick. Hannah in foil not Hannah, Sisse, and Foil is incredibly expensive, uh, where when in the past she did not used to be. So Food Chain, I mean, I like Foils from older sets now. I think that's where a lot of value is going to go. Now, Copper Tablet, this is a unlimited, uncommon, that is $138. Now, this price is not going to stick because it's not really... No, first of all, the card is not on the reserve list. As I said previously, unlimited cards are just going to continue to spike in price. And even crap. So what we see in the beginning is we see cards that are very good on a reserve list, like the unlimited dual lands, go up a lot ton in price. And obviously power nine is power nine. Then you see a trickle down effect where cards that are playable also go up in price. Now we are seeing the bottom end of for unlimited where the cards that are not playable are spiking for no reason than other than unlimited the print run compared to today is peanuts right now the print run today I, I think you, honestly some distributors some single distributors have more supply than the entire unlimited print run as right now for Ixlon so anyway let's move on to Ixlon I wanted to do a hodgepodge just for a hodgepodge sake uh, here we see the first card to really spike, and it's not one that you, from Ixlon. It's not one that you would expect. It is Death Gorge Scavenger. It's a cheap dinosaur, which is great. And whenever it enters the battlefield attacks, you may exile a target card from a graveyard. If it's a creature card is exiled this way, you gain two life. If your non-creature card is exiled this way, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. So the life gain is pretty good. And removing stuff from graveyards, I mean any graveyard, from a graveyard, that's pretty relevant. So you could hit your opponent's graveyards. The plus one, plus one, I mean it's a four for, it's okay. What is really important here is for the dinosaur deck, you need early drops. Otherwise, you're not going to survive red deck wins. Or It's not really red deck wins that you're, tried, you're worried about, it's the mono red decks it's different from red deck wins where there's a lot of it's faster these mono red decks are more of a between a a fast deck and a tempo deck all right so as i said before when i played magic we were not playing these random reserve list cards we were playing lord of the pit black knight sangin vampire sarah angel healing slav i mean Again, we're little kids. We don't know that that's a bad card. I was like, wow, look at this card. It's amazing. You can prevent free damage. Uh, and it was that one card that regenerates and another card that brings back. I mean, when you're a little kid, you don't know. But you do know Lord of the Pit is the black Shivian Dragon. Shivian Dragon could trade straight up for a Black Lotus. It could trade straight up for a playset of Underground Seas. And then the person who gets the Underground Seas is getting ripped off. That's what it was back in the day. So when you talk about Lord of the Pit, it is super iconic in my opinion. It is the big baddie that you wanted to play in black. So Sarah Angel was what you wanted to play in white. Sivan Dragon was what you wanted to play in red. Uh, Lord of the Pit was what you wanted to play in black. Green, I think you wanted to play Crawl Worm. That's like the best card. And then what's the other color I'm missing? I'm missing a color. But anyway, moving on to Slive Hand. This is a good card. It is now the. <laughs> it now is uh, playable. Um, it's 
quite interesting to see how hard blue has been hit to understand a sleight of hand and opt or playable in modern as cantrips. So sleight of hand is slightly better than opt, but opt will also see play. Why is the portal second age so valuable? It has different art. The portal second age art was more cartoonish. I feel like it was targeted to kids, which is really funny because all the night stalkers and pirates had guns. It was the first time in magic that I saw guns and typically magic doesn't really use guns as much. Definitely not. This is probably the set with the most guns. All the night stalkers had guns, all the pirates had guns, the zealots had guns, everyone had guns in the set. It was aimed towards younger kids as an introduction level. So they had, uh, what is it, advanced, expert, and beginner. This was the beginner product. All right, what else did I play when I was a kid? Giant Growth, you, Giant Growth, Lightning Bolt, Healing Slav, Dark Ritual, and obviously Ancestral Visions. I kind of, so I told the story about Force of Will, how I wasn't actually interested in Force of Will. I was interested in Contagion because I thought that was going to be the end all be all because creature removal, wow, that's incredible. Like back in that day, creature removal was very hard to come upon. It wasn't like the best. Um, creature removal was very limited. You couldn't hit black creatures. You couldn't hit artifacts if you were black. And this one hit all of them because they did minus one, minus one counters. I really wish I had invested, I had more money. If I had more money, and instead of having more money during Alliance, I had more money during Alpha, I would have got all of these sets because I love them. I love the sets, the Giant Growth, the Lightning Bolt, and I would have done so well because I would also have Ancestral Visions, right? And that's how I got all those Force of Wells. It wasn't by like design. It was just like, oh, I need to play sets. I wanted five, 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 five. But the one I was really seeking was you know, I was only seeking really the contagion, and it just so happened I got 50, 40, 50 force of wells by the way. Earthbind, this is also what I play. This was probably the most controversial card in my middle, I'm uh, not middle school, in my elementary school. And teachers really didn't like this card. And this is why people thought that it was demonic because it was, you know, imagine you're an elementary teacher, you're, in thir thir you are a third grade teacher, and your students are playing magic and one of them plays this card. <laughs> You're probably like, hmm, banned. And that is exactly what happened. So my middle school, Pierce Middle School, banned Pokemon cards. But before that, they banned magic cards. And before th that, my elementary school banned magic cards. And this, I think this card is one of the reasons. But people played it because it's a common and it was like a lightning bolt. We're like, oh, cool, lightning bolt. So you always put this on Sarah Angel. You would play it on Sarah Angel every single time because that was the one card that would make your life miserable. Okay. So there is a $14 card. <laughs> I did not realize this was $14. Uh, when this came up on the list, I was like, really? Like, is this like $4? No, it's 14. Metallic Mimic, I mean, it is good all around, and you had the opportunity to buy in at under $5, under $4. And at that time, I'd probably said, yeah, buy it. I think this is, has long-term, it's going to be good long-term. I still believe it's going to be amazing long-term. Any tribal is going to want this. Any plus one, plus one counter mechanics is going to want this. So it fits those two extremely extremely popular groups right now and that is not that is probably the ideal place to be in ed8s uh, a little bit in standard actually i think it's played in standard quite a bit because you can call dinosaurs right it's a two drop dinosaur pretty much huh I, I think that's why people are using it so i'm not playing the standard right now i'm only playing really modern in ed8s Talking about dragons, and I like all of these dragons to dragons of Tark here. I especially like the ones that haven't gone up in price. We know that Dragon Lord Jamoka has really just skyrocketed in price. Otaka is steadily getting there. Kologon hasn't moved. Slimguard has moved because people have spiked it. And I'm missing one. So which one am I missing? Jamoka, green, white. Kologon, black, green. Slimguard. Ataka. No, I think that's it. Was well, there only four of them? No, there's a fifth. 
And the fifth has to be, oh, oh, Jedi. Yes, yes, of course. The most powerful one in standard. I like that one too. I like all of them. Mythic dragons and foil will always be a good investment. It's like mythic angels and foil. You cannot go wrong. Even if they reprint it, the original foils will always have value. They'll always hold value. A lot of cards do not hold value well. Mythic dragons and foil, mythic angels and foil have always held value well. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.